This is Jaguar Shoes Collective, Shortwaves with me, George Godfrey, today talking to Letitia from Average Sex. Hello. Hello. Uh, I wanted to ask what's the story behind Average Sex, because you guys have been around for a couple of years now. How did it all start? We met at the Victoria, Finn, our drummer, and um, Sam playing their band, Beds in Parks. And okay. that's how I got introduced to Sam. And we go along straight away and then we start jokingly saying we should do music together and then we eventually actually the talk turned into writing songs, silly songs in my kitchen and we thought it would just be that, like just a jokey, we called it average sex, not even thinking about it, we just thought it would be funny and uh, well, our first song is about the Victoria. <laughs> Uh, how's lockdown been for you over the past couple of months? We have a technique for writing songs with Sam O'Donovan, the guitarist. Um, he writes all the songs on GarageBand with all the instruments and then sends me the instrumental. And then I add vocals and the, I write the melody and the lyrics. Right. We've been writing songs actually that didn't stop us. Oh, know, amazing. So that's been good. We have a couple of uh, lockdown songs added to our collection. <laughs> uh, well, you guys have been keeping busy because I saw you put out a compilation LP, the uh, Erotomania one. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's an uh, LP compilation that's coming out in France because we haven't had any release in France. So it's on a French label called Le Maquis. And, um, and it was supposed to come out a bit before. It was supposed to come out for uh, Record Store Day. But it's been obviously pushed two months with the um, COVID situation. Mm. But still really excited that we have that like beautiful record. The graphic designer did an amazing work on that, Philippe Gelmetti. And we're really proud of that object. Yeah, it looks like, great. Object it, itself looks really good. Is it um is it basically all of all of your music up until now or did you just kind of pick your favorite songs that you've released so far? So it's everything we've done the two EPs and three singles that were not mm. released on the record yet. So nice. it's everything um everything at once it's kind of like a way of like ending these parts of our history with the band and then we'll move on as soon as we can record again, we have other songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear though. That's what you want, right? So for the album, it's going to be only new songs. So that's going to be back with Tim Burgess on his label at Genesis. Mm. So we're really excited for that to come and uh, it's going to sound great, I think. Yeah, I like, I like the idea because when I saw the compilation at first, I didn't know that it was only out in France and I thought, are you doing like a greatest hits before you've even put an album out? Because I really respect that. <laughs> yeah, no, it was just for the French public. Right. So because I'm French, so it was a way to get a bit uh, out of the UK as well, mm. reach out to my roots. <laughs> Perfect. Well, you mentioned the, the album there and obviously working with Tim. How did that come about? Like, where, where did you meet him the first time round? So basically, um, Finn, um, our previous drummer, uh, was friend with him and we supported the Charlatans one first time uh, in Kingston. Nice. And um, Tim watched us and he fell in love and he was like, I want to work with you guys. And we've been working really closely with him since. Hey, such, such a nice guy, such a hero. Would you say that he's kind of playing like a mentor role? Is he showing you the ropes? Because, I mean, he's been about, he's seen a few things. Yeah, he's amazing. He's been so helpful. We've been recording with him. Uh, he helps me so much with the singing as well, teaching me like little techniques. He's been super great, like really showing the ropes and like in matters like touring with him, it's been amazing as well. It's been like, yeah, for me personally, like most of my musical career, if I can call it that, has been yeah. supported by Tim. So he's been like 
great influence. Now that's really cool as well that he's sort of like taking you under his wing. When he did the Twitter listening party for his own album because we, uh, Average Sex was his backing band. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. That's cool. So we talked with him, so we were playing twice a night, Average Sex, and then Average Sex turned into <laughs> the Anytime Minutes and was playing for Tim on his solo project and wow. me singing with him. So that was like, that was really fun. And so during his Twitter listening party, uh, he mentioned us and everybody started tweeting photos of our shows and that was great. That's so we great. feel like we're involved already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, had you played in bands before that or, or as Average Sex like your first band? I've been in a couple of bands before but never bands that like actually took off and uh, I've had um, actually a dark history with um, I had a band in Paris and my guitarist killed my drummer. Oh wow, Jesus. Yeah. So that was quite traumatic. So I, I at that time I was lead guitar and a singer. Yeah. And I stopped playing guitar after that. Right. Because I was too traumatized. How difficult was it to sort of make that decision that you wanted to get back into music? So I guess that would sort of make you pretty wary about it going forwards. Well, I felt really guilty about it for years. So I started bands, but didn't follow through, wrote songs with friends, never really totally stopped, started playing the bass. Um, but with, um, <clears throat> sorry, with Average Sex, it was just easy and natural because Sam's got a history as well of losing, he lost a friend he was in a band with as well. So we click straight away on mm. that regard of like the guilt you can feel about doing something you love because yeah. you lost one. So yeah. What was the first gig for Average Sex like? Because I've been asking quite a few bands this and, and some of them have been really good and they, they went really well. Some of them have been absolute disasters, some have been quite funny. How, how was yours? It was amazing, it was at the Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> we were playing second, I think, out of three bands. And uh, and it was super packed and it was amazing and I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> it was overall really fun, it's a great memory. Well, we've mentioned the Victoria quite a few times. This is a Jaguar Shoes collective video. And I've been told by Albert from the venue that you guys have possibly played there more times than any other band. What is it that that um, keeps bringing you back? What do you love about that venue? We love playing everywhere in the UK, mm. but if we're playing in London, we really like playing at the Victoria because it's just a good vibe and the sound people are really good. So it's like just an overall good experience that we like repeating. The Victoria, like loads of venues around the UK and around the world right now, they're struggling during lockdown. They've just launched their crowdfunder with Save Our Venues called It's Not Over, It Starts Now. How important are small venues like that, do you think, for bands who are trying to start their career and sort of get people to hear their music? They're the most important. We can't exist, like bands can't exist without these venues. And it's such a rich culture. There's so many bands going and it's, Amazing, like all these little gems you can stumble across upon. Sorry, I'm French. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that they're really needed. The like everything will collapse without these smaller venues. Like, how can anyone get bigger if they can't start somewhere? Absolutely. Well, listen, Letitia, thanks so much for chatting. I'll let you go soon, but we're going to do our Jaguar Shoes pin-up profile now. I've got a couple of quick-fire questions. Just answer the first thing that comes into your head. Don't think too much about it, okay? <laughs> okay. Up first, who was the last band or artist that you listened to? Um, Lil Peep. Very nice. Uh, what is the best pizza? Uh, margarita. I like it simple. <laughs> it's really the basics. Great. Uh, you could only pick one, Buffy or Xena Warrior Princess? 
Oh, Buffy. I've got Buffy tattoo. Oh, there she is. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> what is your favourite drink for a gig? For a gig, whiskey. Nice. And lastly, what's your favourite average sex song? Ooh. Uh, it's uh, our next single called Dumb. That's not out yet. Ah, nice. A nice little tease there as well. I like what you did there. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for chatting, Letitia. The new Average Sex LP, Erotomania, is out in France and hopefully we'll be hearing that new album sooner rather than later. All right, thanks very much. You can listen to Shortwaves at jaguarshoes.com forward slash radio. And don't forget to subscribe to this video so you don't miss out on any future chats. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram. You can find us at Jaguar Shoes Collective and at Victoria Dalston.